Welcome to this candidate's debate sponsored by the League of Women Voters of Marin County. I'm Susan Stomp uh, for the League of Women Voters of Marin County and also with us is Joan Brown, our timekeeper. The candidates with us today are running for a four-year term for three seats on the Marin Community College Board of Trustees. The candidates with us today are Brady Beavis, Diana Conti, Barbara Dolan, and Juan Dean Trainer. The can candidates have been invited to make opening statements of two minutes. We're to begin with Brady Beavis, and then Diane, and then Barbara, and then Wandine. <clears throat> now, the, this will be um, Brady's turn. Brady? Uh, first, I want to thank the League of Women Voters, uh, and particularly in a race like this uh, for College of Marin Board. A lot of people may not realize in the county the, they're looking at the larger races and they may think that the College of Marin Board is something that they're not going to spend as much time studying. In this particular race, with the Marin County and the college being poised for all kinds of opportunity and coming out of a rather dark period in their history, I think it's, it's a, this is a very, very important race. And otherwise, I wouldn't have even thrown my hat in the ring. So I would, I would, again, thank you, League of Women Voters, and I'm hoping that the viewers are going to be able to make good decisions for the future of the college. Um, I used to be on the Board of Supervisors for the College of Marin, for, <laughs> I used to be on the Board of Supervisors for the Marin County, and that's been a long time ago. And I thought I was over with politics. I'm telling you that this is an important race I'm hoping that we can make valuable distinctions about the possible business, public-private partnerships that we have that could really grow the college. And I want to serve the people again in this, in, for this college for the future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Brady. <clears throat> now it's Diana Conti's turn. I'm Diana Conti, and I'm honored to have been board president for two of my four years on the board and proud that working together with my fellow trustees and the college president, we have really achieved a significant turnaround for COM and it's thriving. The bond funded programs are on track working in collaboration with the community. We now have unconditional accreditation and the number of degrees awarded jumped by 40%. We've implemented plans to pay, pay off the unfunded liabilities and eliminate a structural deficit. Long-standing labor disputes have been resolved. And our new fundraising department has raised nearly $500,000 already. My future priorities include increasing fundraising, developing a long-term vision for the IBC campus, working closely with the Novato community, and greater partnerships with businesses. We've made great progress and we're on the right track, but we have a lot of multi-year plans that are, re gonna, are they're gonna require us to stay really diligent and hardworking to keep them on track. I'm seeking re-election to come so that I can continue to make it even better. And I will continue to work effectively with all trustees. For more information on the issues and my endorsers, my website is contiforcollegeboard.com. And I'll just close by saying I am really excited about an even brighter future for COM, and I ask for your vote. Thank you, Diana. Now it's Barbara Dolan's turn. My name is Barbara Dolan, and I'm running for my eighth term. It has been such a pleasure to serve the people for the College of Marin and I would like to continue on because of my extended knowledge and the fact that I represent five different student groups. Because I received no financial interest money from any group, I do not accept donations. I, that leaves me free to represent whatever group I need to represent and just serve the students and the people in Marin County. Those five groups that I work with and have served in this last 
seven terms are the less abled or the ADA people, the seniors represented by our emeritus programs, transfer for further education students who wish to seek uh, higher education, the English as a Second Language program, and the job training workforce. These are five <coughs> distinct separate groups that should not be mingled together. We need to improve our mission statement and really figure out what the College of Marin is all about and what we're going to do to serve those five different groups. Thank you for your support in the past and I look forward to continuing to be a voice for those groups. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. Wandine Trainer. Hello, I'm Wandine Trainer, and I'm running for re-election to the College of Marin Board of Trustees. It is truly a privilege to serve as one of the trustees of our community college, College of Marin. I am excited about all that is happening at both of our campuses, IVC and Kenfield, and I am proud to be a part in providing leadership with a vibrant, vital, and dynamic public community institution as the College of Marin. A little bit about me. Um, I have a long history in Marin. I have deep roots, and I'm a lifelong resident of Marin County. Um, I'm an attorney practicing law in San Rafael for the past 28 years, and I have served in numerous capacities and leadership positions, including three terms on the board of, of the College of Marin serving as president. I've also provided leadership in community and professional organizations, having served as president of the Marin County Bar Association, 10,000 Degrees, form, formerly the Marin Education Fund, and Planned Parenthood of Marin, Sonoma, and Mendocino. I know that what it takes to be an effective community college trustee, and I understand it needs, we need to support student success, and we must maintain accreditation. It is also critical that we have a working knowledge of budgets, buildings, and bonds. I have those skills and I have proven a track record that I can make the difficult decisions. Regarding accreditation, I have spoken at several statewide conferences regarding the board's role in accreditation. Regarding student success, I know that not every student wants to transfer to a four-year institution, but student success is about planning and supporting students in their roles. I look forward to the questions that will be asked today in the forum and hope that I will have your support in this election to be re-elected to the College of Marin Board of Trustees. Thank you. Thank you, Juan Dean. Now it's time for uh, questions from the League. Uh, the candidates will have one and a half minutes to respond, and we'll start with Diane Conti. Uh, what is the mission of College of Marin, is it, and is it changing, or do you think it should change? Well, the mission ha is, is multi-pronged. We serve um, transfer students. We serve uh, certificated students. So we're, we're, we're helping people get higher education. We're helping people get good jobs. And we're also helping lifelong learners. I think that um, there is more of a move to make sure that we're getting all of the co transfer students in that we can and to serve them in, uh, in a way that they're having good student success and you can see by the statistics that we're achieving that. Um, they, we have a robust amount of career certification programs and um, I would like to see us to continue to expand that with greater partnerships with businesses to really find out what they're looking for in their new employees. And I think that um, we've served lifelong learners. I think that's important. <clears throat> At this point, I don't see that being in contradiction to serving the other populations. They're not taking away space from the other students. I like to think that we can um, keep that as a both and, not an either or, and get really creative about how to do that. Thank you. Uh, Barbara. Well, I enjoy answering this question because that's one of the challenges. And I think these five different groups of students that I mentioned previously that we serve are very, very different. And with limited funding, we really do need to clarify what our mission is about. Uh, we have students from the very professional to those who do not have the knowledge of English and even basic skills. And I think the funding for that is something that can be very, very costly. 
we need to clarify specifically who should be attending the College of Marin and what our mission statement is. I have worked in the past on mission statements and I feel that we really truly do need to upgrade um, what our mission is and not just have a generic mission statement like we do that is trying to include all those groups. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Wandine. Mm -hmm. Well, the mission drives all that we do, and um, the mission also is dictated in large part based on the education code. Um, so in terms of the students that, that uh, Barbara Dolan was referring to, um, we have a duty and responsibility first and foremost to provide um, English as a second language, basic skills, transfer, and workforce development programs. Um, it is indeed an opportunity that we can do in Marin County is have lifelong learning, but our first priority needs to be those that have yet had the educational opportunities that everyone sitting at this table have had. Um, and in, in speaking relative to the mission, it drives our tr strategic plan, it drives our education plan, as it should. And it's timely, the board has already scheduled that we are going to be revisiting our mission and we are going to make sure that it's current for the current needs in the same way that we recently uh, turned upside down our priorities for enrollment because we recognize that the high school students coming out of the local high school um, are not able to get the courses that they needed and um, that was because the priority was with people who already had college credits. And by turning that upside down and saying to the high school students, we, we think you are a priority and we're going to focus on you. Uh, many of them are coming to us with remedial skills needs and we have them basic, basic skills program for that purpose. So it's an example of how what we do is driven by the mission that we have and it's time to revisit it and it's already on the board schedule to do so. Thank you, Brady. Yes, um, it seems like a community college is, is to me a, the most important player in serving the not only education needs but also the lifelong learning needs but also the one that I think needs to be addressed more adequately um, is the ability to get a job, the ability to transfer into a four-year school, a great four-year school, and the ability to enrich our lives in the community through lifelong and emeritus programs. Um, can could actually, those are doing, it seems like those are doing better than they ever have, at least in the near, in the near past. However, what we haven't been addressing well enough, and especially in view of the, the IBC campus being underutilized, we haven't been addressing the ability to partner with businesses and build some really exciting programs that are actually income generating to the college in biotech, in, in uh, clean energy. Right now we have a wonderful program in organic gardening, we have one in cheese making, we have uh, ones in, in nursing. But let's add some of the businesses of the future so our kids are prepared for the jobs that they need in the 21st century. Thank you, Brady. Uh, the next question will be uh, for Barbara Dolan to start with. Uh, do you think the district has done what it promised the taxpayers it would do with the measure C funds. I think that many people did not expect uh, a lot of the funds to be expended the way that they have and I think there are a lot of concerns. I receive the calls from people who uh, are upset and come to tell me about the issues that they're concerned with. Uh, building more buildings at the Indian Valley campus when we already have buildings that are not used. Uh, why were those not simply remodeled and upgraded to make the standards appropriate for today's students? Um, so I do have concerns about the waste that is going on, the numerous change orders, uh, just the way the operation is, want, is run, I think that there should be a very clear audit available to the public for what is going on so that everybody is on board with what's happening. I think other districts have done that. I would suggest uh, we look at one that Compton has done. Um, it's a very simple procedure. It does not require um, elaborate 
a lot of elaboration, but we should have regular audits and they should be independent. Thank you. Thank you, Carver. Wandine? Well, thank you. We are fortunate to have had the support of the Marin County taxpayers when we passed Measure C in 2004, and I was honored to have served as the co-chair of the Measure C Countywide Facilities Bond Campaign. We are happy and proud to be able to say that we are on our final phase of that bond project and that we have completed four new buildings. We have completely modernized three facilities. We have um, upgraded the computer systems. We have safe passageway. We have ADA compliance. It was something sorely needed because we were under consent decree at the time. And we have state-of-the-art facilities for our students to learn in the best environment possible. We are fortunate to have had the upgrades also include environmentally sensible alternatives where we have solar panels and geothermal. So yes, I can say that we have met the promise that we made to the taxpayers and um, I feel it's important for me to run because perhaps I'm the only board member that was on at the time that remembers what we said we would do and particularly in my role going around and campaigning to get the support. I have to comment on what Trustee Dolan just said. We do have audits, we have audits, and we have a Citizens Oversight Committee. We have had clean reviews every time. And in fact, Trustee Dolan is the only trustee that, that, that did not vote for the bond. So um, I don't hear anything but positive from the community about what we've done. The students are delighted. The faculty is in awe, and particularly of our new math science nursing buildings. It is truly an honor to be part of that entire project, and I know we have met the requirements we set. Thank you. Brady? Yes. Um, I've been very impressed by the new president, Dr. David Kuhn, and most of the board were, has been working very, very positively with him. Um, to follow up on what Wandine mentioned, the fact that we have a board that's been trying to do a lot of very positive things is, has not been met with all of the board working together. Um, I am the only non-incumbent that is running in this race. I'm doing so to actually replace Barbara Dolan on the board. That is because I feel like we can't just be strong defenders of the status quo, and we can't just be looking at what the negative things are that we can do about our college. I know how to say yes. I know how to say yes to the future. I know how to say yes to what is needed. I know how to say yes to a languishing Indian Valley campus. And I know how to say yes to the companies that are looking to us to supply the people that they need to put into their good, high paying jobs here in Marin County. And I'm willing to talk to them. Thank you. Diana. The bond projects are um, coming in on time and on budget. And the facilities that, that uh, Trustee Trainer has mentioned are all uh, phenomenal facilities. They're green buildings. We're going to save money on, uh, on, on the cost of utilities because they are green buildings that will be long-term and sustainable. We're, they're set up with smart classrooms, so they're really going to fit the technology needs of today's students. I think that early on with the bond project, there was disagreement about the priorities that were set, and the bottom line is there was more need than money, so priorities had to be made, and there's been some disagreement about what they are. But going forward now, I'm, I'm pleased with what's happening. The campuses are looking great. Um, the construction's going wonderfully with the new academic center. I think we regrouped and we worked really closely with the community after not doing that as, as much as maybe we should have um, with the new academic center. So we came up with a design that worked for the students, worked for the college, and also worked for the neighbors and the local community and was in keeping with the long-term vision of, of College Avenue. So I, am, I think we've done a good job. I think that there's gonna be more that needs to be done and we still have some deferred maintenance needs, but, on, but fortunately we now have a facilities master plan, so we are now budgeting and addressing both deferred and non-going maintenance needs of the remaining buildings. Thank you, Diana. The next question, uh, how effective do you think the college administration is? Is there anything you would like to improve? And 
Wandine Trainer will be the first person to respond to that. Well, that could be a really easy one. I just say extremely effective and then let the next <laughs> person answer. Um, I, um, no, seriously, uh, I have tremendous respect for Dr. David Wayne Kuhn, who is our president. Um, and I think that he came in, he was the right person at the right time. And I think that's also true of his predecessor. She was the right person at the right time. Um, different needs at different times. And I think that's the beauty of the community college that in the change of leadership and the board's role and responsibility in hiring and um, uh, the CEO in particular, the stu superintendent president, and the board has done a very good job doing that, at least on my tenure. Um, the current administration has really reached out to um, all the groups, and as, as uh, Diana Conti mentioned, we have some peace in our negotiations. Um, and I think that what has also happened is that he's a can-do person. He wants to be very positive. He wants a board that is positive. And I think that the more that we can work well together and support him in his efforts, the longer he will stay. And I think that will be good for the community as a whole. Um, there's also the issue that he has been able to bring in his own team. In his first year, he probably took on a lot of other people's um, administrators. And I think that he is feeling now that he has his team in place and he is able to move forward and delegate and make decisions and come to the board with really creative ideas. And he's reaching out to the community for additional ideas. And I'm extremely happy with what he's doing. Thank you. Brady? Yes, um, I also believe that Dr. Kuhn is doing a fabulous job. He is a great diplomat, a great uh, bridge builder. He's been working with the community, with, with businesses, with the faculty. What he's done to help bring the faculty in, uh, out of their dispute uh, culture and into a, a collaborative culture has been really impressive. Um, I think that what he needs now is not only uh, the rest of the faculty working with him and the and the employees of the College of Marin, but also more um, in, not only engagement of the students because they were remarkably kind of cut cut out of some of the processes, but he needs an engine to keep this moving forward and modernize some of these courses, modernize some not just the campus the, the buildings in which they're teaching but the course offerings and the very way that we actively participate in the community with, with and let, and inform people more of what's going on. Uh, the fact that, that he doesn't have a board that historically has been able to agree on things and help give him ideas and go out into the community and be able to work with people because it's been having to deal with its own divisiveness in the past. Um, I, I don't think, I think I can go ahead and help build that collaboration. I want to be able to help move the college forward and I'm hoping that you can, I can have your vote for that purpose. Thank you, Diana. Well, I, I really agree with all of what's been said. I think um, the administration has done an excellent job. It's the, the keystone for creating the turnaround that we've had. Um, as people have said, David is responsive to the community. He works very well with the faculty. Um, so he listens, he's responsive, he's smart about it. He's also a very pragmatic and smart manager. And when, you know, often when you have to administer a very large organization, you have priority, you have competing needs and you have to get creative in what you do about that. And he's very good at doing that. You, you dig down into the details and you sort through it and you find the win-win solutions. You say no once in a while when you have to, but, um, but you find ways to make it up however you can if you have to take something away. And I think he's done an excellent, excellent job in that. With the morale on the campus is better. Um, I think it has helped him to be able to bring in his own team. And um, so administration's getting even stronger. And the only thing I could think of that would be an improvement is to find a way to clone him. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Diane. Barbara. Well, Dr. David Wayne Kuhn is certainly a diplomat. And I do respect his ability to reconcile differences between some of the groups. But I also represent a group of those students who are not necessarily getting their needs met. And that's why I said we really need to clarify uh, those five student groups. And I would love to see Dr. Kuhn specify specifically 
what dollars, what courses and classes are going to be going to each one of those groups. Because right now, it's a big question mark. I would also like to see the wall between administration and the community come down more than it has. Over the years, I have watched meetings that were robustly attended by the community dwindle to almost nobody there, maybe a handful from the community. And that happens when community members feel that they are not being heard or listened to. And that is something that I would like to see improved upon. I am a former student, graduate there myself. I played for their tennis team competitively. And uh, that college is a wonderful, both campuses are a wonderful asset to this county. And we need to keep that strong, vibrant, robust vitality going. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Uh, the next question will be answered by Brady first. And uh, does the uh, college have enough students, or does it need to increase enrollment? It's not just the enrollment per se. Uh, this is what they call a basic aid district, which means that you don't get an extra dollar for, from the state in subsidy for every student that, get, that comes there. However, there is additional revenue from the workforce development, from the vo vocational classes, from the classes that um, ADA, from people who need to have some extra subsidy because there is a little extra uh, equipment and all going into their, their needs. That's one way of producing revenue. One of the things in a basic ed aid district is that the College of Marin is basically, without the state subsidies, is basically a $45 million business. And as such, why doesn't it have a long-term strategic plan other than the one that just came through from Dr. Kuhn for three years? Um, I think we need to have a long-term strategic plan. We need to have goals and objectives that include the IVC campus. We need to have ways of generating revenue because we can't keep going back to the taxpayers. Thank you, Brady. Diana. Well, I, um, I do need to correct, correct something that you just said. Um, Brady, we a actually have a variety of long-term strategic plans. So they are in place and they are being implemented. Um, and as you mentioned, with enrollment, it's a little tricky because we're basic aid, so if we get more students, we don't get more money. However, it is our, our charge to provide the greatest amount of education for the greatest amount of people possible. So we all, always want to be able to serve people and address the need in Marin to the greatest extent possible. Um, I think, and we've had a little bit of dip in enrollment, but that's a lot, that's due to three things. One is that um, the fees have gone up, they've more than doubled from $20 a unit to $46 a unit. Um, the base, the, um, uh, we went from 20% of students receiving um, reduced fee assistance through the federal guidelines to 80%. Um, but they, the guidelines have changed so that people have less ability to qualify for it if their grade point average doesn't reach a certain level. So it's, it's put a strain on those students and we've also um, had to reduce the number of courses offered and that's part of keeping ourselves on budget. So I think that um, we need to continue to stay on top of having the relevant courses we need for the students um, continued outreach to the community, find out what the greatest needs are, that we factor that into all of our educational planning. Thank you. Barbara? Well, I certainly do agree that there are problems for a student with the fees being increased and the course reduction. That's why I mentioned earlier that we need to really target what our mission is about and specify specifically how those students in the five different student groups can get through the programs that and their needs are met. Um, it's an interesting dichotomy here. It's our local taxes that pay, but yet we cannot, or do we have any authority or ability to tap into the state federal funding that is behind so much of the programs that uh, we talk about getting into. So you paid generously for our Measure C bond, and that's what I would like to see 
meet the needs of our local students who want to go to the College of Marin. And I think it's pretty hard to serve a broad base throughout the country, throughout the nation, throughout the world. Um, and we need to look at, at those funding resources and the students that we serve. What about Marin students that live here? Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. Bondine? Well, it's, it's an interesting question as far as, you know, do we need more students, I think, is at the core. Um, and first and foremost, I think that if we look at IVC was uh, built pre-Prop 13, and um, there were projections at that time that every municipality in the county was going to grow population-wise considerably greater than it has. And because of the no growth in all of the various jurisdictions that has happened since IVC was initially purchased, um, it significantly impacted the number of students that were projected for the future for College of Marin. Having said that, we have done an excellent job adjusting with the ebb and flow of enrollment and due to what other trustees, trustees and candidates have said um, regarding what we, uh, it was a strategic decision. We would either have to have laid off faculty and staff or we would have cut classes. And we felt it was important, it was an opportunity to right size our, our course offerings and we did that. And it's well planned and it's thought out and we thought indeed there would be some dip in enrollment. But having said that, um, as, as others have mentioned, the increase in tuition is a significant factor. And I think what's really a, also uh, an important factor that were, was mentioned is our tax base and the fact we're basic aid. Um, and it's been mentioned we need to do more fundraising because many homes are in Prop 13 housing and they are not paying what it takes for us to run the College of Marin and that's a an, an candid, honest assessment of the situation. Um, and as a result, we need to reach out in other ways in order to be able to provide the courses that people may want and attract more students. Thank you. Uh, the next question, we'll start with uh, Diana. And it, would you comment on the issue of the College of Marin Foundation for student scholarships? But since there was a scandal and it came to a bad end, should it be restored and functioning again? So the, first I want to clarify that the scholarships are still continuing. The um, funds that remained intact were the endowed funds that, that provided the scholarships and those will continue to be distributed and those are protected. And those are important. Um, as to what the future looks like, the process that we're in right now is it's requiring an ongoing review by the State Attorney General's Office. So the, the actual course of the future can't be determined until that review is completed. Um, and there's two things that need to happen. One is there's no money left to operate what was currently, what was previously the foundation. So then we have to figure out what do we do from here with the 3.8 million in assets and that we can't really decide that until we get the Attorney General's review and get some details clarified. But then what it looks like going forward, obviously the, can't, the college needs a robust fundraising arm. Its internal department is doing very well, but what it does after that is really to be decided by the full board of trustees. So it could create um, another 501c3, it could uh, create an auxiliary, or it could just continue with an internal department. We're looking at all those details. Um, my own personal p opinion is that I don't think it would be wise to have another separate 501c3. I think the internal department is doing very well and I think we need to, as we dive down into the details, we need to assess whether it's going to give us more to be able to um, create an auxiliary. Thank you, Barbara. Again, this is something that I think really needs a clear audit, as I mentioned earlier previously, and I think um, we need an independent audit that is clearly going to be open with the public, uh, simply stating what the facts are and what has happened. With the dissolution of the foundation, the college now is in control of $4.2 million. I think we need to be very clear if people are going to donate specifically what their funds are going to go for. And so far, that has not happened. We need that audit. And I think we have good independent auditors who could clarify exactly um, what, what needs to be done. Our students have benefited not only from the scholarships 
but programs in the district have also been uh, on the receiving end of foundation monies in the past. So there are many, many students in this county and who are very, very grateful for the scholarships that they received as well as uh, department heads for the funds that they have received from the foundation in the past. Thank you. Thank and let's have that audit independently. Juan Dean? Um, well, I, it's unfortunate I have to begin by clarifying, but the, the previous um, comments by Barbara Dolan are not accurate, and it's unfortunate. And I would suggest that people go to the College of Marin's website and you will see that there was a full audit. Um, everything is clarified, everything is transparent, and it's important that we speak with honesty and with the truth, particularly around a public institution as important as College of Marin, and to have a candidate misstating the facts is most unfortunate. Um, I really want to be positive. The opportunities are clear, and as Diana Conti mentioned, we have a robust fundraising office. When I was co-chairing the, the Measure C campaign in 2004, the board at that time created naming policies because we intended that we would have naming opportunities for our buildings, for our lockers, for the chairs, everything. When you go to any private university, you see there are so many opportunities. College of Marin has all of them, and particularly with four new buildings and three modernized facilities. We have tremendous opportunities to raise additional funds that will support instructional equipment and eventually bring people to be connected to the college to support our programs. That's the vision the board had. Unfortunately, members of the College of Marin Foundation Board were threatened, perhaps, but our board was diligent in asking the right questions, following through, and making sure that the endowed funds that have been mentioned have been preserved and are preserved. As far as going forward, I think the experience of having a separate 501c3 was a bit of a challenge, and the board needs to be able to make sure we receive and collect the funds we need. Thank you. Brady. Yes, since I wasn't on that watch during the time that the foundation mishandled the funds, um, and I trust that it is going the right direction, and apparently so do the people in Marin County because they've contributed almost half a million dollars so far in additional uh, donations to the campus. I, I would like to use this time instead then to stress that the community college has a special charge. It has the, the charge to serve everyone in Marin County who wants to get an education. It needs to be a top education. It needs to be a transferable. They have to be confident that it comes from an accredited school. Two, they need to be able to enrich their lives through courses they can take in current events, like the one that went on yesterday at the IBC campus and others that the Emeritus program offers. And three, and this is where I come out in particular that is lacking, is sufficient and timely skills training. Um, I, the, the fiscally sound and competitive college is also absolutely necessary. Why is it people in Marin, young people in Marin County are going to Sonoma State, uh, uh, the Santa Rosa JC, which has such a fine reputation? We should be drawing from those other counties around us who want to have some of those specific skill training for our businesses here that are unique and forward thinking. Thank you. The next question, we'll start with Barbara Dolan. Uh, do you anticipate any issues for the College of Marin with regard to the accreditation uh, with the accounting, accrediting uh, commission for community and junior colleges? That currently is a challenge for community colleges and we've heard what's happened to City College in San Francisco and I love it that I, am, I can be independent because I can now go and tell our academic senate president I totally supported their role in opposing the shutdown of City College um, by the accreditation process. This is something that colleges um, always have had to deal with in the past, but they have never had it at the forefront to the degree that it has been these last few years. And yes, I think we are going to continue to struggle to try to meet the mandates of the accreditation as required legally, um, and that's a serious issue. Thank you. Wandine? 
Again, I feel like I've got to correct I, for, for the sake of City College. City College hasn't been shut down. Um, and uh, the issue relative to the Western Association of Schools and Colleges, um, the accreditation process is rigorous, it's important, and it's necessary, but it's peers. Peers looking at each other and seeing how we're doing in comparison to each other and what are best practices and whether or not we are conducting our institutions under best practices. Um, as I mentioned in the introduction, I have spoken at statewide conferences relative to the board's role in accreditation, and it's really important that the board understands that we are a leadership over all of it, not just how the board conducts and operates its own business and, its, and enforces its own policies, but also to the fact that we need to make sure there's a current technology plan, that there's a current strategic plan, and our board did that. Um, we did that last year in preparation of our midterm report. Um, but on, on top of that, we have a responsibility to make sure that um, we're staying on top of it. And it's one of the issues that the board in our self-evaluation said we needed to make sure that the promises we made as far as the technology plan takes money. And where's the money going to come from? And so um, that's part of the challenge that City College and other institutions had because their boards were not forthright in looking forward to the future. We have had a five-year budget plan to look at to see what we can do when we made promises in any of our plans that had a dollar amount to it. We had to put some certainty as to when we would be looking back to see if we could achieve it because the issue really is can you be wise in your business operations. Thank you, Brady. Uh, yes, I, again, I'm not an incumbent, and I, and I didn't uh, participate in either the creation or the attempts at solutions for the accreditation problem. What I understand is that, that Dr. David Kuhn, through his wise uh, discretion about offering early retirements to faculty and all, has really helped us in many, many ways, and part of that is that the accreditation problems were not due to academics. They were due to, we, we were still doing fine on the academics. Uh, we were completely adequate and beyond adequate, superlative. But when it came to the way that apparently some of the faculty and equipment was um, subpar, then that, that was part of what it was based on. And that is being fixed rapidly. So I think it's still, an incredibly good opportunity. It's a great college, and I'm hoping that we can do more recruitment out in the schools and be able to actually um, have, this, have the, the future be able to be much brighter. Thank you. Diana? Well, I think we are on track to make sure that we stay compliant with everything that's required for accreditation. I have every confidence that that's not going to be an issue in the future, but we will have a lot of work to do. There are um, many, in many areas, we have multi-year plans that have to be implemented. We're going to have to stay on top of that. We're going to have to find the resources for that. There's resource implications and policy implications in many areas. The board in the last year, when we went through our own self-study for the accreditation, we reviewed every single master plan. And we talked about the resource allocations and the policy all allocations. So it, we're well informed with what it's going to take. And it's going to be a campus-wide effort involving faculty, staff, administrators, and the board to make sure that we stay doing that. But these, it's a good thing. It's not just for accreditation. This is what's going to make the college stronger. Thank you. Uh, the next question, we'll start with Juan Dean. Uh, recognizing the adoption of the Student Success Initiative, how is College of Marin responding to the initiative and meeting the needs of its students? Well, as I said in my opening, it is the board's roles and responsibilities to understand student success. Um, and that student success is really about planning. And it's about um, having all of our students, whether it's in workforce development or they're transferring to another institution or they're there for basic skills, or ESL, that they are there with a plan in place and that we help them have a plan. Um, and that with the plan they have goals and they can understand which courses they need to have and the board has invested um, by allocating resources to have a new program in place that will track the students, the courses they're taking and keeping them um, currently with involvement with counselors to make sure that when they start to go off track we can help them come back on track. I also mentioned that we changed the priority for enrollment, and that was a critical shift. 
um, allowing people that had 150 units to take a class before someone who was just starting really wasn't responsible, and yet it was what was always done and throughout the state. Um, Student Success Initiative brought this to the forefront and said we need to be looking at where we're putting our priorities for enrollment, and the College of Marin responded appropriately. Our new Vice President in Academic Affairs has done an exemplary job, understands what needs to be done, and I'm proud of the work that we have done so far on student success, and indeed there's, it's an ongoing job. It's not something that the board can just say we did it. We need to monitor it. There needs to be quarterly, semi-annual, and annual reviews. It's about completion. It's about results. It's about success, and that's what we hope to be able to master. Thank you. Brady? Listen, part of it, at the convocation that Dr. Kuhn uh, had, it was really wonderful to see the actual faces of, of students and faculties working together and finding out that the, the overall uh, conclusion that the consultant came up with was that College of Marin the faculty, the, the people who looked uh, at the interve intervening with students who really needed the help, finding them in time, uh, being able to see if they needed ESL skills or additional tutoring, uh, was all about the fact that they care. Showing that they care made a tremendous difference. And something as, as small as when you're walking around the campus and someone looks like they're, they're lost, the fact that they can actually come up to them and say, you know, uh, can I help you? Uh, or go up to a student that looks like they're floundering and be able to say, how can we help you? Student success is not just an overall policy, but as they were pointing out, it's a, it's a one student at a time, recognizing who needs the help, paying attention to them, listening to their questions, and finding out who needs the help so that everyone can succeed who attends the college. Thank you, Brady. Diana? Well, I think as a result of the student success initiatives, which have taken a great deal of, of hard work to get implemented, um, I think we've seen the evidence that it's working very well. We have the number of degrees awarded jumped by 40 percent, certificates by 33 percent, and overall graduations by 34 percent. We've seen some really exciting work being done by the faculty, um, which is it's a much more individualized approach to make sure students have the, have the guidance they need to stay on the course that's really going to allow them to have the kind of success that they want. Um, again, it's, it's good. It can get even better. We, keep, we need to keep it on track and keep moving in a bigger way. It's been a very good thing for the college and I think a very good thing for students. Thank you. Barbara? The education that I received at the College of Marin probably is not possible today. 43 of our faculty retired or is leaving the college and specifically the people in Marin County have different needs and the expectations here are different than any other county in the state of California. We are unique. Um, we have many challenges because we have an older population basically that started out attending, uh, that enjoys attending the lifelong learning classes. We have five very distinct student groups and that's why I've said we really need to specify meeting the needs of those groups. It can be very, very costly when we are so broad-based that we are including the number that we have right now and that's why we need to target specifically what the mission of this college district is and tailor those needs to meet students <coughs> in Marin <coughs> County first. Thank you. That ends the questions. Before the candidates make their closing statements, I would like to give you some important dates. The election day is on Tuesday, November 5th. The last day to register to vote is October 22nd, two weeks before the election, or if you need to re-register if you've moved since you last voted. Requests for absentee ballots must be received by the Elections Department by October 28th, one week before the election. Early voting opens at the Civic Center, Room 121, on October 7th. If you go to the League's smartvoter.org website and enter your street address and your zip code, 
you will be able to see your own ballot with links to the candidates, issues, ballot measures, and information about the voting process itself. In addition, our website, MarinLWV.org, has many other online resources for voters to research facts and campaign financial information. Now, the candidates will be making closing statements of one and a half minutes and will go in reverse order, starting with Wandine. <laughs> Okay, um, well I'll begin by saying thank you to the League and to the um, Community Media Center for this opportunity to, for us to be able to reach out to the Marin voters. Um, and I will reiterate, it's truly a privilege to serve on the Board of Trustees for the College of Marin. It's an exciting place, lives change at this institution, and it's a public institution, it's for all of us. And I think that if I were to look at what I could do to make a difference, I have found that I have made a difference in my time serving on the Board of College of Marin, and I am proud of what we've been able to accomplish. I think that our, in, our institution's facilities speak for the change that has gone on at the College of Marin. When you go to IVC, there is a there there. You know you're on a college campus when you pull up to the, the college instead of having us off in clusters off the street. College of Marin, as I said when I ran around the county to, to uh, support Measure C, I said when you get to the College of Marin, you're going to know you're there. It's not going to be turn left at Taqueria. It's going to be turn <laughs> left at the College of Marin, and we're about to see that. It's an exciting time for the college. We are responsible stewards. The board, um, contrary to some who have said otherwise, I think is the board is working well. We support the president. Um, I welcome the opportunity to add Brady Beavis to the board because I think we need a can-do, must-do attitude to support our current president. It time is up for us to be able to say that what we've done is okay. We need to be creative, visionary, and I am one who has done that in the past in other organizations and with the college, and I hope to continue doing that. I ask for your vote. Thank you. Thank you. Barbara? I think it's important that the voter hears two sides, at least, of an issue. I am not a clone. I am independent. I have a lifetime teaching credential. I have a master's in library science, and I previously worked and founding a executive search firm, uh, BMI, that was down at Larkspur Landing for many years. And uh, I love the job and what I am doing. I, it's been a pleasure to serve you, the people, and the students in this county. Um, the college is a super wonderful asset, and my trips to Indian Valley have not uh, been swayed in favor of one campus or going just to the Kenfield campus because I am independent and I think it is important to have people who can present another side of the issue um, and not just go along with the flow. Thank you very much for your support. Uh, in my last seven terms I have enjoyed speaking about the college um, throughout the state and also at a national level. So thank you again. I seek your support to thank remain an independent member on this board. Thank you, Barbara. And thank you, Lee, for having us. Diana? <laughs> Bottom line is we've made good progress and we need to be diligent to keep it on track. There's always more to do to make sure all of our students get what they need. I'm proud of what we've all done together, and I'd like to continue on the board to continue to help make COM even better. I think voters have four good candidates to choose from. I think that there are varying perspectives that they can choose from. Um, I hope to be one of those choices. I have a proven track record. I work well with all trustees in the community, and I will continue to draw from my 30 years experience as a nonprofit CEO. It's been a privilege to serve on the board. I am thrilled with the progress that COM is making. It's thriving, and uh, we can make it even better. And I promise to continue to work hard. I really, really look forward to a bright future for the College of Marin, and I ask for your vote. Thank you. Brady. I believe I have the qualifications to actually take us into the future. Because what I was doing after I left the Bar Board of Supervisors, the Marin County Board of Supervisors, was working in workforce development, with building public-private partnerships between 
private businesses, and community colleges all through the state. I worked first for the multimedia industry uh, through the Bay Area Economic Forum. They recruited me to go ahead and put in a world-class website and connection and four books for community college instructors. And that came from talking to community college instructors first and businesses second, and then turning that around and making sure that they were linked up, hooked up, and they were excited. And it changed things. It helped, it helped keep the, the multimedia and high tech and digital industries here, like Pixar and ILM, who were on the board of directors. Um, it helped keep them here in the Bay Area. Uh, after that, I did work for the Employment Development Department and the Department of Labor doing the same thing throughout California for different industries. We can do that kind of thing here in addition to offering excellent <laughs> academics here at College of Marin. This can be stellar. I want to be part of that. I want to be part of the 21st century with the college, and I'm excited about it. Thank you, Brady. And thank you to all of the candidates for being here and sharing your, your thoughts and ideas and to our timekeeper, Joan Brown, and thank you for watching.